coach at Illinois State on Saturday, and it, so early on, you see how inches make such a difference in this game. You're inches away from knocking down a pass that instead goes for a big touchdown against you, and now you're playing from behind. Yeah, you know, Illinois State got off to a good start, uh, made a couple of big plays early and uh, got some momentum uh, in the game. And I think when you're playing at home, uh, that that's always a, a big thing. And, you know, pleased with the gut, way our guys responded to that and got the game back uh, into a position at halftime that, uh, you know, was pretty much dead even. I was going to ask you about the response because playing from behind is not something you guys have done much this year. No, and uh, you, you want your team to to be able to to deal with different kinds of adversity, and uh, you know I thought our guys hung in there tough um, and uh, weathered that storm early on, and and honestly in the third quarter thought we really dominated play. We just could not get the ball in the end zone. Mm-hmm. And one thing you hadn't had to deal with this year that was a problem last year was giving up a lot of yards on the ground, and in this game they come away with over 300 yards rushing. That was, uh, without question, the most disappointing thing on the day. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we look at that uh, and broke it down. And, you know, a lot of it was we just didn't tackle very well. We, we missed some tackles. Uh, Illinois State's got a couple of uh, big, talented running backs, and they broke tackles and, and took what should have been a, a small gain and, and turned them into uh, uh, four or five really long runs on the day, which added to their yardage total. And then turnovers hurt you as well. I mean, Chris threw his first two interceptions of the year, and, and at least one of them was in a position where you guys were driving for a score. Yeah, the you know the turnovers uh, um, were were uh, ones that uh, we've been able to avoid uh, up until this point, and and uh, we had uh, several things. You know, on the day, uh, you know, we turn the ball over as we're uh, moving the football. We get uh, two uh, offensive pass interference uh, penalties that both uh, stop. Uh, uh, drives and one that uh, takes away what would have been a go-ahead touchdown and and then uh, we have another possession in the fourth quarter where we have the ball uh, inside the 10 yard line and and uh, you know so that's four opportunities that we had on the day to put points on the board and we didn't get it done yeah I was looking at that in the second half alone I, I counted five times you were inside Illinois State territory and only came away with seven points in those five tries we knew going into the game that uh, points were going to be a premium. Um, I really felt uh, watching, um, and even though that maybe their prior two weeks' performance hadn't demonstrated that, uh, that this was one of the best defensive teams in the league. And and uh, we didn't take advantage of, of those opportunities, and it was a variety of, of things. And, and uh, you know, one, uh, you got to execute in the red zone and, and, uh, and in, in your opponent's territory. And, uh, we didn't uh, we didn't do that as well as we've done that over the previous six weeks. And perhaps the biggest sequence of the game, your chance to tie it late, you give it up on downs, and then second play from possession, you give up an 87-yard touchdown run. I mean, how quickly things change just in those couple of minutes. Yeah, you know, we we decided to go for it on fourth down, and, uh, you know, the wind was whipping pretty good. Field goal would have been into the wind mm-hmm. and still would have put us down, to, uh, you know, additional three points. Touchdown would have given us the lead, and, and even if we didn't score there, we felt giving them the ball deep in their own territory would create an opportunity for us to get it back at, with good field position. And, and uh, you know, they pop an 87-yard run, um, you know, a big play on second and long and, and uh, you know, a play that we just missed a tackle at the line of scrimmage and and didn't get a, a second fit to the football very well. And, and, you know, credit to them for making a play and, and obviously a play that uh, that we needed to make. Was that the most Chris has been hit this year? Because he really, at times, was really, really rushed and, and of course, sacked as well. Well, anytime you throw the, have to throw the ball that many times, uh, it's it's never a good thing. And, and your quarterback's going to take hits uh, when you're throwing the ball 63 times because Illinois State had some good pass rushers. Um, I mean, I think we could have done a better job of protecting him at times. Um, but... Uh, um, you know, and uh, you know, sometimes it's uh, a, a a little bit of a misnomer that passing quarterbacks uh, don't take the same hits that running quarterbacks mm-hmm. do, because a lot of times they're going to get uh, hit as as the ball gets away. Is he okay? Because I know a couple times it looked like he was kind of limping a little bit. Well, he he played a physical football yeah. game, uh, like everybody on our team did, and. And so, like everybody, he's uh, you know he's gonna he's a little banged up early in the week, uh, but uh, 
Um, you know, we've got a week to get everybody healthy and get them ready to go for uh, for Southern Illinois. So as you look at the mental makeup of your team, Bob, you mentioned dealing with adversity, and this is the first time you're going to be coming off a loss this season. What do you see from your guys in the, in the moments after that game and in the days since? What's, what's the mindset of this team now? Well, obviously, our guys were down. Um, you know, it uh, was a, a, t- a tough loss, uh, and I, I think what made it a tough loss is you, you look at the fact that we had some opportunities uh, to put that game in the win column, and... and uh, it's the way that the rest of our games are going to be in the league. And we're going to play high-level opponents um, that uh, are going to have to claw and scratch just like we have over the first uh, six weeks to, to find wins, and we're going to have to play at our very best level. And I, I think that's the one thing that our guys recognized is that, uh, you know, that wasn't our, our, our best game of the year. And and uh, so from that standpoint, uh, you know, our energy level is back. Uh, you know, there's a couple ways that, that uh, you face adversity and the way that this team's going to face it is to attack it and and uh, be better as a result of it. And a test for your defense against Southern Illinois on Saturday. This is the number two passing attack in the Missouri Valley. And you look at the numbers and you realize that one of the reasons they've been so successful is because they protect the quarterback well, just allowing three sacks in seven games. They do a really good job getting the ball out on time. Uh, uh, they throw a lot of uh, quick passes and... and uh, um, uh, from a standpoint, you know, makes it makes it hard for you to get to the quarterback. Uh, so I think you have to balance what you do there with coverage, as as well as uh, trying to to make sure you have got a mechanism to 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 hurry the quarterback uh, and not let him sit back there and make decisions. And this is a guy, Sam Straub, that threw for 340 yards against you last year. So your defense is familiar with what he can do. Yeah, you know, he had a great game against us last year. Um, and he's got some talented, skilled uh, players uh, to to complement him, and and so it's going to be a you know a game that uh, it's going to challenge us from a defensive standpoint, and and uh, one that uh, we'll need to respond to. And yeah, they've got this is really going to be a matchup of two really of the top passing teams in the conference. I mean, they've got uh, a couple of great receivers as well. You guys are so deep at wide receiver as well, and and uh, so the ball could be in the air a lot in this game. Well, it could be a game that there, you know, there's a lot of plays. It's, uh, you know, both teams uh, run a little bit of tempo, and both teams, uh, um, you know, take pride in in terms of their execution. And usually in games like this, it's uh, the team that plays the best defense that wins. One of the things they've done well is they've forced a lot of fumbles. In fact, they've recovered nine fumbles on defense so far this year. And Anthony Knighton has gotten to the quarterback four times, and so it's a very active defense as well. Yeah, they, uh, you know, I like uh, their defense. I think they're very athletic. Uh, and uh, yeah, the, so from a standpoint, uh, the one thing that we need to do uh, offensively is we need to get back to a little bit better balance um, in in our attack, which uh, helps keep teams off balance. And the one thing they did very, very well against you last year, they held you to one of 15 on third down. And I know a lot of that is from what you do on first and second down. Uh, that's correct. Um, you know, we've got to do a better job of, executing on third down than we did last year. You know right. full well after having Miles Bergner on your club last year how important a good kicker is in field position. They've got the number one punter in the conference now in Lane Reason, and so obviously field position is going to be very, very important, kicking indoors. Uh, yeah, um, you know, big games um, and, and games in our league are often decided by field position and, and things like turnovers, and uh, that's going to be a big part of the, of the game on Saturday afternoon.